Well, hey guys, and welcome back to Hates a Good Life. My name is Natalie, and I'm so glad you're here because today we're baking bread. Now, I decided I wanted to start baking our own bread about two or three months ago for about three, maybe four main reasons. The first reason is that this is a total homesteading skill and one that I really want to hone in on. The second reason is that when you make something yourself, as with all things, when you make it yourself, you know exactly what's going in it. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been reading those labels on the bread in the store and I'm not so comfortable with all those ingredients. So I decided I would start to make our own bread when and where possible. And the last reason I started making bread is simply out of frugality. Bread can be pretty pricey, especially if you're buying the organic stuff and I just don't wanna pay that much money. So I decided to start baking bread. Now, what I have found out along this journey is that there's basically three classes of breads, at least from what I understand. As a novice. There's your soda bread. That's like Irish soda bread, the stuff that you have on St. Patty's Day. It's loaded with sugar and candies and it's dense and moist and chewy and oh so good. It's made with baking soda, so you're like guaranteed to get a rise out of it. Next, in the middle of the complexity scale, is baking bread with yeast. Now, I was really excited about this. I thought like this is how you make bread. I was wrong. This is, again, not quite the real way to bake bread, but one step closer. Now, why isn't it the real way to bake bread? because the yeast, that dry active yeast that you've seen in your mom's pantry or maybe that you use at home, it's made in a factory, it's man-made. And it's man-made to simplify the bread baking process. So I was all jazzed on making my own bread and using yeast, but it turns out that it's kind of a shortcut for the real deal. Over here on the more complex side of the scale is sourdough bread. That is made with using a starter. Now, a starter is something that you have cultivated. A starter is like this little bioactive thing that you can make in your own kitchen. And that's actually what we tried to make. We failed on our first starter, but we're gonna try again. We tried to make it here and it's kind of hard to get it started, like hard to get the starter started. It, it's like a little animal. It tracks and expands and contracts and expands for about 10 days from the beginning of starting it. It takes about 10 days to grow into like this living creature and then when you're ready to bake bread, you take part of that living creature, you dissolve it in water, you add your flour, and by adding that and mixing that with everything, and then that animal helps expand everything and create bubbles, and then that's where the bubbles come from and that's where your rise comes from. Most people would say it's one of the more nutrient-dense breads that you can eat. That's another thing that interests me about bread baking is that so often we're eating these bread calories and they're calories, but they're not really nutrients. There's a difference. And so sourdough bread can be and is usually seen as one of the healthier options, the more nutrient-dense option. Out of all three of those options today, we are in the middle zone. This is the zone that I've been focusing on. We are focusing on the added yeast version of bread, okay? So hopefully that gives you guys some information about you know the different classes of bread that are out there and hopefully gives you an idea of where we're landing today, which is in the middle zone on the manufactured yeast bread zone, which is, in my opinion, still better than store-bought because you know exactly what's going in it. And this recipe only has one, two, three, four, Five. five ingredients. Yay, we like that. I like simple ingredients. So without further ado, it is time to get cracking on this bread. I'm making this bread tonight for my family because we're getting together for a little trip conversation. We could be going to Canada in June near the Anne of Green Gables zone. I think it's Nova Scotia, I think. Um, so anyway, hopefully getting more details on that, but if you guys know anything about that or have recommendations, please let me know. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Let us know what we should go do while we're out there. All right, let's get started on this bread. All right, so I've got about two cups in my teapot. I'm gonna heat it up on the stove to about 100 degrees, and when that is at 100 degrees, and 100 degrees is the key word here, don't go over, don't go under. You really want it around 100 degrees because that is what the yeast likes, okay? Take it from me, I learned. Okay, so just by the look and feel of it, I actually already overheated this. So we're gonna pour it out into our Pyrex container and take its temperature and see where we fall. Woo, oh my goodness. Over 140 degrees, holy shnikes. We've gotta cool that down. Okay. Okay, by adding some tap water, We've got it to just under 100 degrees. Okay, so I've got one and a half cups of lukewarm bath temperature water. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of sugar. All 
All right, my sugar has dissolved in the water and I'm just going to gently pour my yeast into the water. Some has fallen, some has stayed to the top. I found that by allowing some to stay at the top and some to kind of sink down to the bottom, that's where I get my best result. All right, so now that our yeast is pretty much fully activated, we're gonna take it over to the stand mixer. I'm going to dump this very gently into the bowl and add our flour slowly. So now we've got our yeast water mixture and we're gonna add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And now for the fun part. We are going to gently tip this out. We want to leave the air bubbles intact. And now we're basically going to fold our dough over onto itself. Then I'm just gonna go like this. This is another way you can kind of make a round dough. Just kind of tuck the seams in onto themselves and this is going to help kind of close up those seams and just make a really nice dough ball. I'm going to flour this same bowl up. I'm going to flour my dough a little bit. Make sure the bottom of my bowl is really really covered. And then just like that it goes back in the bowl for another 30 minutes. Look at that bread, you guys. All right, so we are ready to put this in our pan. Okay, so I'm just gonna dump this out and we're going to leave it seam side up and place it into our Dutch oven. one of the best breads I've made yet, you guys. Practice makes perfect. Each time it's a little bit better. Oh, it smells so good, it smells so good. So this bread turned out amazing. It smells so good. I wish there was smell vision so that you could smell how wonderful this smells, but you know what that means? It means you're just gonna have to make this wonderful recipe yourselves. I'll link everything down below. I have to get myself to family dinner. I have to recompose myself after that live stream tonight. You guys made my week. That was so fun. Please join us. It was really a lot of fun. We wrote a Western song about a man and whiskey and relocating so that he could have some chickens. <laughs> It was really, really fun, and I'm like still laughing about it. Um, so please stay tuned for that uh, and join us live on YouTube. All right, I really have to go. I'm gonna be late for dinner, so off I go. I'm gonna take the bread with me, and um, I'm, I'm gonna go. Okay, bye. Oh yeah, P.S., if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more from me, subscribe, and for the latest around here, hit the bell as well. Thanks so much, you guys, and I'll see you next time.